Hi everyone, Dane Paul Stewart here. A lot of people have been asking me lately what all this great, really inexpensive support gear I use is, and where do you get it, and how much money can they save? I'm here to tell you, you can save a lot of money. I've used all kinds of cheap gear, and most of it's trash, but not all of it. There's a lot of real gems out there that are a fraction of the price of the big name stuff, and uh, you treat them well, and they'll work great for you for years. So I guess it's time to do another installment of What the Hell Is That Thing? All right, now obviously I've got a lot of stuff spread out here, and I'm gonna take you through each and everything one at a time. But first of all, I'm gonna show you these cases. I get these at Lowe's or Menards. It's like a competitor to Home Depot. They're probably in just about every city. I don't know what they call them where you are. It's a Stanley brand or whatever. I got them under several different brand names. This is a case that holds about as much as the standard $200 Pelican cases. They lock tight. They are water sealed. They have a rubber water seal around them. And they're 25 bucks. And they got a nice big handle on the top. Obviously, you can see I've got a lot of them. Yeah, eight of these for the price of one Pelican. Now, I do use Pelicans for my glass. You've got lenses, filters. That's really serious stuff. I do recommend you splurge a little and get a serious Pelican case for at least your glass. So let's have a look at these things. Yeah. Now I just throw a little bit of cheap foam in the bottom. Perfect. Rubber seal. That's a water seal. Throw these guys in a swimming pool. And they do lock tight. And you can padlock the latches. They even have a little three-quarter size. I got four external field monitors in here. I think I got this one for $18. Like I said, the big ones are only 25 bucks. So the first thing, rigs. You've got your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. It's awesome. And you want to rig it up without spending $800. And I think that's entirely possible. I've seen the expensive stuff, the Red Rock stuff, the Zacuto stuff. It's great. It really is. But everything I've got is a tenth of the price of that stuff at the most. And... It's been solid for years. It's all metal. It's, it's the real deal. It'll work for you. So the first part, a cage. I do really strongly recommend a cage for your pocket camera. They're fragile, especially that HDMI port, as we all know. There's a lot of cages out there. But I strongly urge you to spring for the Move Cam. This is a real beauty. Big solid handle, all beautiful solid metal. Uh, it's got everything you want on it. Now, it doesn't come with the rails and all that, uh, but it comes with everything except rails, everything you need. Um, it's wonderful. It's customizable. It's got all sorts of quarter 20 holes all over it and a couple of 3 eighths. You can put anything you'd normally use on it. And most importantly, it's got the beautiful built-in HDMI and power tails. So you're never plugging stuff in and out of the camera. Honestly, I try to never take the pocket cameras out of these things. I got two of these so far. I've looked at the others, like the Tilta. The Tilta's close. It's good. I don't know what kind of person you are if you want a silver cage and rails. I, I can't understand it. I'm not sure we can be friends, but, you know, to each their own, I suppose. There's one major difference between the Move Cam and the Tilta that I think is important, and that's the base. The Move Cam has this big, huge, flat, beautiful, <laughs> drilled out to death base. Put that thing down anywhere, it's not tipping over, it's not going anywhere. It's wonderful. So add some rails to it and we're ready to go. Let's have a look. First thing most people ask about, power, batteries. My favorite is the XT Power. It's an iPhone charger type battery. There's a million of them. We all know that they come in a million shapes and sizes. 
But this one is my favorite, and I'll show you why. It's a perfect size. Look at that. Exactly the size of the rails. Blends right in. Stays out of your way. Not too wide. Not too heavy. Also, this one is 60 bucks. On the pocket, it lasts just under three hours per charge. Yeah, I got three of these babies. Uh, how do I rig them up? I got a couple little simple clamp brackets. Put a little Velcro on them. Put a little Velcro on the battery. Pow! You're done. Also, because of the MoveCam's power tail, you don't need to get any special power cable to use the XT Power or really any of these type of char batteries and chargers with the pocket camera. I got some of the LAN parts that go directly into the pocket's power jack, but because of the MoveCam, I really never use them. One more thing about these XT Power batteries. Uh, they tend to go in and out of stock and there only seems to be one seller on Amazon of them. And whenever they are out of stock, the link will take you to a different battery. It's bigger, it's more expensive, it's really too big for putting on a rig like we're talking about here. It looks like the big anchor ones. Um, I wouldn't want one of those. It, that's not what we're talking about here. Whenever they come back in stock, the link goes back to normal, and that's happened a couple of times in the past year alone that I've seen. So uh, it stands to reason they'll be back in stock normally. This has been a real popular battery, especially with Blackmagic camera owners. 59 bucks. 69 bucks? Eh, the price kind of fluctuates. But still a lot cheaper than almost all the other solutions that will last three hours. This is the one thing you really want to spend the money on. On eBay, you get these about 325 bucks complete with the riser, the base, the handle, the cage, and the tail. Now, I like to rig them up with usually 40 centimeter rails. Now, I use all Fotasy rails, whatever that brand is. They're really good, they're solid, they're really cleanly finished, and unlike almost all the other rails I've used, they don't scratch up very easily. Uh, the only thing you need to be aware of is if you get the Fotasy rods, they're threading is proprietary. It's not going to thread into other manufacturers' rods. So get all photosy. But they're 15 bucks a pair at like three or four different lengths. They're like tinker toys for your camera. One pair of 40 centimeter rails. You got room for your battery. You could hang an external monitor off the back here and plenty of room up front for a lens support, map box, follow focus, whatever you need. So that's where you got to spend your money. Now the rest of it is where we make the money back. Handles. I see handles going for $200 a pair. I got these. It's a newer, solid metal. You beat someone to death with these. 30 bucks. Completely adjustable. You can get your hands at any angle you want. Now they come with a 30 centimeter rod and this is a 40. I like the 40 because I'm a tall guy. I got wide shoulders. This is where my hands naturally fall. It's more comfortable. Somebody might like something a little more narrow, get the 30 centimeter rods, no big deal. You'll also notice I've got the rail mount off to the side. I'll explain why in a minute. There's a couple of reasons for that. Okay, the next part, full shoulder rig. If you got your cage and one pair of rods, you're more than halfway there. You don't need really hardly any extra fancy stuff. One more pair of rods, a weight, and a shoulder pad. Folkga shoulder pad, 15 bucks. Got a little cutout for your collarbone. It's perfect. Now, it slides along the rails, obviously. I like that. That means that you can customize instantly how far or back you got your whole rig in front of you. And if it's sliding too much for you, you know, throw a little gaff tape in there. That'll take care of it. And here on the end is their three pound weight. 30 bucks for a three pound weight. You can go to Sports Authority and get a 25 pound weight for 
15 bucks. I don't get it. This guy you'll just screw on to your existing rails with the little joiners, the couplers that you get also from Photosy, a couple bucks. In this instance, I'd use the shorter ones and put it right on and it's done. I'll rig it up in a minute and show you what that looks like. Now, I also got one of these because I'm a tall guy and when I do shoulder mounted follow alongs or really pretty much any shoulder mounted work, the vantage point <laughs> is a little too high up. I'm a little too tall. It always looks like, uh, you know, the camera's looking down on everybody. Mat boxes. Man, are there tons of mat boxes out there. And I've had a lot of them. Uh, our friend Bill, UTTR Labs, out in the islands, he hipped me to this K-Vision out of Canada. Now, they normally sell these for, I don't know, almost $300. It's not real huge. Got uh, two filter holders, one rotates. You can take the eyebrow off. It's light. It's really light. And for some reason, they're selling these for 99 bucks. Their website says something about some manufacturing blemish, like some component didn't get properly spray painted in manufacturing or something. I have no idea what they're talking about. They look perfect. I got two of them, 99 bucks each. Uh, you can add an inexpensive rail mount which I'll use, but also it's light enough that you can clamp these right onto a lens. And these are just as tough as any of the other clones. In fact, the business end in the back, the filter holders and uh, rotation rings, uh, this part's metal. So that might actually even be better than some of the Chinese clones that cost twice as much. When you get the K-Vision matte box, you also will be getting uh, step-up rings and uh, additional rings to uh, fit your lenses if you're going to clamp directly on the lens. They got them in all different sizes. I think I have four different ones. The little knickers work really nicely too. Good stuff. 99 bucks. I like that. If you're shooting in a place like the desert, like I live, out in Arizona, ambient light can really become a problem. And it's not just the light in front of you. It's not just the sunlight. It's light bouncing off everything from all directions. And the additional shading of a matte box will make a difference. It'll, it'll cut down on that ambient scattered light, give you a little bit better contrast in your shots. Now, I also got this other Chinese clone of the Red Rock Swing Away Arm matte box. You've all seen them probably, all over eBay, etc. This is a real clone of the Red Rock. It's extremely similar. The factory that was making them for Red Rock in China was probably backdooring these. The only difference is that on the Red Rock, the filter holder and the rotating ring is a lot nicer, but these are one-tenth the price. Uh, now, they do everything that they say. They really do. They have huge barn doors, but this thing is a pain in the ass. It's just too big and too heavy and too much trouble, and I almost never use it unless it's the last camera on an outdoor shoot needs needs something. Got to have the light tamed down. I'll use it. Yeah, I got a couple of these Fochka DP500 2S's. This is a pretty popular follow focus. You get these for under 200 bucks. I don't know, 150, 160 bucks. They've got two hard stops, which I insist on. I'm not paying money for a follow focus without hard stops. I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, they clip right on your rails really quick, really easy. It's adjustable. There's no lashing. They're, they work really pretty much as well as any follow focus I've ever put my hands on, and that's a lot of them. Uh, to me, this is the deal. This is the deal. Yeah, last week we were shooting at a restaurant, and we had a rack focus from the kitchen to the front bar. And there was a cast of about, I don't know, 14 people, fancy blocking. And they did, I think, 27 takes. 27 takes. All I had to do was just sit there and just crank my lever on cue. I didn't have to worry about what I was doing. Focus, hit the marks every time. Get the lever, 15 bucks. Now you see I've got some other cages and stuff around here. This is one uh, I got from the Cine City 
We know that website. They got several names. Chinese importer. Uh, this one came with pretty much everything you see here except the map box. This is a camera R map box. I picked it up used for 70 bucks. It's great, lightweight, does what it needs to do. Only has uh, one filter holder, but it rotates. It's it was great for 70 bucks used. The nice thing about this cage, Cam Tree Hunt is branded on this one, is that it's big and it's solid. I can put any camera in here. I put the Blackmagic Cinema camera in here, the Canons, GH2, the Samsung, anything. Uh, pretty much any camera smaller than uh, Canon C100 will fit in here. It comes with a pair of rails that are shorter than this. I put some longer rails in, obviously. Uh, that's my tripod plate on the bottom. Uh, but its quick release, which is built in, is compatible with the Giados quick release plates, which are really good quick release plates that sell for about 30 bucks. They've got bubble levels on them. They're really solid. They're great, great, great pieces. And they're also compatible with the plates that come with the Davison Sanford tripods, of which I have three. It makes a huge difference when all your quick release plates are the exact same model, same format. Uh, camera goes from the shoulder rig to a tripod to the jib, and I never have to worry about plates. And if you lose them, as often as I do, you can get replacements that will just work for all of them. These tripods are big, they're heavy, they're solid, they come with a fluid head. There's a couple of different versions, uh, one with a bowl base so you can just level it quickly from the handle. I also got a couple, like the jib is on here, uh, oh, other way around, uh, with a, a center pole that rises and allows you to go over seven feet, or about seven feet at the max. Uh, I really like being able to shoot up that high on a tripod. It was worth it to get a couple of those. <laughs> These tripods are like $150 with the fluid head. No, they're not a Benro or a Sackler, of course not. But the fluid heads are pretty competent considering you're getting the whole thing for about 150 bucks. Their pan and tilt is plenty smooth for most applications. Uh, is it as fine-tunable or customizable as like a Sackler or Benro? No, of course not. Again, the whole entire thing is only 150 bucks. I've had these for years, since the DVX 100 days, uh, when I was putting bigger cameras on them. Uh, I throw them around, they look fine, they look brand new. In fact, one of them even took a tumble uh, down the side of a mountain. I also got this cute little glide gear portable travel jib. It's really light, gives you about four feet out from the fulcrum, uh, weighs very little, and it was under 200 bucks. That thing's a real gas. I throw a Giados quick release plate on the top. It's got bubble levels, camera on and off quickly. The Davis and Sanford $150 tripods handle it just fine. It's been a lot of fun for the price. Uh, no, it's not a serious crane. You're not going to get shots uh, up and over the trees. But for interior work, uh, a lot of close-up stuff, mid shots, it's fine. It's all you need. You don't really need much more reach than that. You get some incredible stuff for, again, under 200 bucks. Some people have said they don't like rigs. They want to handhold the camera. I implore you, please don't handhold a video camera. <laughs> If it's not a handy cam, don't handhold it. The footage comes out so shaky. I don't want to see it. It makes me sick. It gives me a headache. Please don't ask me to watch your footage if you were handholding the camera. Unless you've got really mad handholding skills. There are a few of you out there, <coughs> Mr. Kofa, who really know how to do that. But that's a skill that takes time. And it, to me, it's not worth it. Get a rig. Put it on your shoulder at the least. Put it on a tripod, put it on a cheap jib, or if you want to handhold it, get one of these beauties. This is the Beholder DS1. Now, this is expensive. I paid 700 bucks for this guy. But this is really beautiful. It's, you know, third or fourth generation on this single handle gimbal concept. And they've really refined them. This thing is a joy. It balances out in about a minute. I can put a completely new camera and lens configuration on this and have it balanced one to two minutes really. 
Uh, and it does what it says, comes with two sets of batteries. Each one lasts about three hours, so I can do six hours of shooting without even stopping to recharge anything. It's a beauty. You want to handhold a camera, get one of these. Now you have beautiful stabilized shots, always. In fact, I find myself using this in times when I would have used the, the jib, and it just the stabilizer here just absolutely good enough. Absolutely good enough. So if you can afford it, get one of these. The Beholder DS1 will hold 1.6 kilograms. That's a lot of camera. I can put much bigger rigs on this thing than the pocket camera. I can put the Samsung NX1 with a big lens like that Samyang 10 millimeter, no problem. Okay, I'm gonna rig up my full shoulder rig. I'm gonna pull out some of the external monitors I've got. Uh, I'll show you how I do the shoulder rigs, a couple different configurations. I like to keep them as minimal as possible. I've been through all the magic arm stuff and the big giant crazy Franken rig with stuff all over it. Yeah, I hate it. It looks awful. It's hard to manage. It's a pain in the ass. This guy right here, almost everything's already on it right there. Uh, I put the handles on and I can mount a monitor right on the front. Okay, here's my basic shoulder rig. I put the short extension rods on, I throw my $15 shoulder pad on, the weight on the back. It's perfect, it's comfortable. The wide front rod, the 40 centimeter front rod, fits me well. My hands fall right in line with my shoulders, it's real comfortable, it feels natural to me. You might want something smaller, I don't know, if you're a big guy, maybe you want, you know, something, I don't know. When I'm in this configuration, I like to put an external monitor right here on this bracket. I can put a seven inch monitor right here. It's right in front of me. My eyes can focus on it easily. It doesn't obscure my view too much. It's perfect. I got that idea from someone right here on BMC user in the show us your pocket camera rig thread. Uh, I thought it was brilliant. I can't believe more people don't do it. It's perfect. Uh, there's no messing with the crazy magic arms, which, Honestly, yeah, they kind of work, but yeah, they're kind of a nightmare too, aren't they? Batteries mounted right in the middle. Velcro. Love me some Velcro. Pretty much hold the world together with Velcro. Uh, I'm using the Lilliput 665 right now. It's a little lighter than the 663. Lots of monitors out there nowadays are lighter than the 663. Okay, here's my offset shoulder rig. As you can see, the bracket puts the camera a little lower. And a little bit more in front of me. I'm looking straight at the screen and the camera's a few inches lower now, a little bit more at the eye level of mm, most of humanity, <laughs> unlike up here in the clouds where I'm at. Real comfortable, real simple, using the same pieces. You get three or four different sets of rods in the different lengths, 15 bucks a pair. It's going to build you pretty much any kind of rig you want. Let's grab a monitor. Uh, I got a whole bunch of them. I got a Lilliput 665. I like it. It's not such a great monitor, but it's light and it's cheap. It's got great focus peaking, false color, and all that. It works. It works for the majority of instances that you need it for, which is primarily focus and framing. I got this little cutie. Look at this little cutie. This is a Viltrox. It's a clone of the $300 Sony that's out there. This guy's a hundred bucks. It's a nice little moderately bright, kind of sharp little five inch monitor. Uh, and again, on something like a shoulder rig or a rig where you just need it for your framing and to assist with focus, it's wonderful. Like I said, they sell the, the Sony version for $300. Also, this thing weighs like nothing. It comes with a nice little built-in sunscreen, which you can pop right off. I actually don't really care for 5-inch monitors. They don't help me all that much relative to the screen that's on the camera. Whenever possible, I really prefer a 7-inch monitor. It's kind of night and day difference to me but they both have their place obviously. Five inches is better than the on-camera screen. 
Uh, also, you can, you know, put it on your rig somewhere at a different angle if you have to be looking at everything from some different angle. So, in addition to the Lilliput 665, I've also got a couple of 663s, a little more deluxe. They come uh, with a padded case and a big fancy hard case. They're heavier. They're quite a bit heavier. Metal frame around it. Now this is an IPS screen, so it's sharper, it's brighter, uh, it's higher resolution than the 665. It's a joy to look at. Now the focus peaking and false color and everything on these is really pretty good. You won't need the focus peaking if you're shooting a black magic camera, obviously, but the false color is wonderful. That's a really nice thing to have. Uh, I don't think I would really want to have the 663 up on the shoulder rig all day long. The extra weight will start to make a difference. Uh, short shoots, no problem. On the tripods, on the jib, it's perfect. Beautiful. Affordable. About 300 bucks. And no, these do not give you that perfect color of the much more expensive monitors that you can tweak your lighting to death with and all that. But for the majority of things that we use them for, framing your shot, making sure you're not missing things in your shot that you find in post later and go, ah! Uh, and uh, focus assist, of course. And for that, the Lilliputs work just fine. They're perfect. Lovely. Now, most of the stuff we're talking about, it's just hardware. It's just machined metal and plastic. So it's reasonable to expect that decent, cheap stuff is going to work just as good. Get yourself some Photosy rods in the three different lengths, 40 centimeters, 30, and there are a couple of shorter ones. You can use them to build all sorts of different rigs. They look beautiful. They're light enough, sturdy enough. <laughs> the $30 newer handles. Uh, yeah, just like the Cam Tree Hunt Cage and pretty much all this other stuff, you can beat someone to death with this stuff all day long. I do not take that good care of my gear. It gets a lot of rough and tumble treatment, it gets knocked around pretty bad, and it's all in absolutely perfect condition. Some of it going back years, like I said, to my DVX 100 days. That goes back quite a while. So, kiddies, if you have any questions about any of this wonderful magical goodness, uh, leave them in a post down below here or uh, PM me, whatever. I'm easy to get a hold of. Pretty much everyone knows where to find me any old time. Not sure that's a good thing. Cheap support gear that really works. For many purposes and applications, it's absolutely as good as the more expensive stuff. Maybe just doesn't have some of the brand names pasted all over it. But who cares, really, right?